Good evening and welcome to Arab TV. I am Vic Zakour, your host for this evening. It's the election season and uh, this election is gonna, it's gonna determine a very important issue and the issue is gonna be the subject of this program and because it is important and the next program, you're wondering what it is. It's high-speed rail. I'm very honored. We all should be honored to have with us today and a distinguished guest, Judge, Clint, uh, Judge Cobb. Judge Cobb, uh, he's the chairperson of High Speed Rail, Rail Authority, and uh, he came all the way from San Jose, uh, I mean from Sacramento, <laughs> to be with us and tell us all about uh, High Speed Rail. Welcome, Judge. Thank you. And thank you for coming over. A pleasure. Well, before we start about uh, High Speed Rail, how did you get involved with this, with this project and this, you know, authority? I was in the state senate from 1986, 1998, and for 11 of those 12 years, I was chairman of the Senate Transportation Committee. In 1984, I had ridden for the first time high-speed rail in France oh. from Paris to Lyon, traveling then at a speed of uh, probably an average of 180 miles per hour. And I introduced a bill which uh, set up a committee to evaluate and report to the legislature on the desirability and feasibility of building high-speed rail in California. That committee reported about a year and a half later that it was both desirable and it was practical, okay. meaning feasible. I followed it with a bill in 1996, which was also enacted, signed by then Governor Pete Wilson, that established the California High Speed Rail Authority, which began its operations in 1997. I became a Superior Court Judge in San Mateo County after leaving the State Senate. Uh, okay. I retired after five years because I could qualify on account of age for a small part of the pension, okay. but remain a sitting judge through a program called the Assigned Judges Program. And even though I'm limited in my public activity like a non-retired judge, there were two exceptions to that, and one of them is holding an appointed public office, not an elected office, but an appointed public office. And in June of 2006, I was appointed by the State Senate to the Authority Board of Directors. And then in August 2006, my colleagues elected me chairman and re-elected me for a second year and recently in June elected me for a third year. Congratulations. So I want to serve through the approval by voters on November 4th of the $9,950,000,000 bond issue so we can begin construction of the system in the year 2010. Okay. Now, I would like the people to know what is it all about. And, and there is a, vi a video, about five minutes, four minutes video that tell us more about high speed rail so that people will get an idea what, what are we talking about. Let's so, watch it. Could you show this video? Please? I think I've seen it once or twice. You have, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
By the year 2030, California's population will increase by 30%, surpassing 50 million. Adapting will require highly efficient, safe and clean transportation alternatives that support our growing economy and protect our landscape and environment. This is California High Speed Rail. The governor and the legislature have seen the light on global warming. They've seen the light on energy efficiency. And that high speed rail it would be a fundamental part of a package of infrastructure and policies to lessen California's impact on global warming, uh, to lessen our impact on imported oil, and to improve our quality of life. Over the past four decades, high-speed trains have proven to be the safest and most reliable form of transportation in the world and are ideally suited for the unprecedented needs of California in the 21st century. Moving at speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour, high-speed trains will link California from San Diego to Sacramento and the San Francisco Bay Area. A trip from San Diego to Los Angeles in under an hour and 20 minutes. Downtown Los Angeles to Palmdale and Ontario airports in 25 minutes. Downtown Los Angeles to downtown San Francisco, just over two and a half hours every time, regardless of weather. I believe that expanding those opportunities in a 20 minute uh, high speed train ride from Anaheim in the center of what we call the Platinum Triangle in the middle of the densest area of all of Orange County with uh, residential densities, to be able to get from there to downtown Los Angeles in 20 minutes is a great way not only to relieve traffic congestion on freeways, but to address future uh, potential and future needs. High-speed trains are a clean technology. Running on electric power, high-speed trains will help California meet critical air quality and CO2 standards, while also protecting our landscape by using existing right-of-ways and promoting sustainable development. We think the project is designed well. There are no stops in the middle of nowhere. The stops are in existing urban areas where they should be. Plus, they've accounted for wildlife corridors, and most importantly, the effect on global warming. High-speed rail is an important part of the solution that we need to have, and have soon, on global warming. Requiring no operating subsidy, high-speed trains will strengthen California's economy, creating as many as 450,000 new permanent jobs. Benefits will be immediate. Moving safely on improved separated grades, slated for construction over the next decade, California's rail and road network will be vastly improved. I believe we need to focus on the future. We need to focus on our next generation. Uh, what is our planet going to look like? How is our next generation going to get to work? We need to think about the benefits in the long term and not just today. To secure California's transportation future, the California High Speed Rail Authority is acting now to preserve right-of-ways and complete engineering and environmental studies critical for building the system. The options are either expand the highways, expand the, the runways, and expand the airport gates, all at a cost of over $82 billion. We can build a high-speed train for half that cost. High-speed trains are a clean, safe, and cost-effective alternative for the transportation needs of the California of the 21st century. It is time once again for California to innovate. It is time once again for California to lead the way. This is High Speed Rail. Absolutely, it is time. It's about time that this country here have a system that's going to be the best in the whole wide world. And we, where else but California? And I think with that video, we we'll just end the program. We don't need to talk more, but <laughs> we've got a bonus here. I mean, we've got this Judge Cop here. He's going to tell us more and more and more and let us kind of like understand what it is really. So tell us, how did the systems develop? Uh, what's the background of, of, of the systems, you know, and, and yep. uh, where we're we heading in this country? High-speed rail exists in 11 nations now. It began in 1964 in Japan. 
the Shinkansen system, which opened in time deliberately for the 1964 International Olympics. France opened its TGV system in 1981. Wow. Germany opened its ICE system in 1991, and Spain opened its system in 1994. High-speed rail now exists also in the UK as part of the Eurostar system uh, across the English Channel from London to Paris now in less than two hours. Wow. Uh, Italy, Switzerland, Belgium, the Netherlands, and in Asia, South Korea, Taiwan, and most recently, in fact, in the last week or two, China opened a 150-mile segment from Beijing to Taiwan. And that is also steel wheels on steel tracks. There's another type of so-called high-speed rail called magnetic levitation. It can be produced by the Germans, but the Germans have never put it in their own country. I see. They're always trying to sell it to the United States or other countries. They sold it to the Chinese about five years ago for an 18-mile segment from the airport at uh, Shanghai to downtown Shanghai. The problem with it is, and the reason the Germans don't build it in their own country, is it costs three times as much to build, three times as much to maintain. Is it faster or the same speed? It's faster, uh, at least on the test tracks. I've taken the test track in Germany outside of Bremen. It's about a four-mile test track. And I've taken the one in Japan, which uh, is about a 10-mile test track. The Japanese are smart. They expand their steel wheel on steel track system. And they'll have uh, about 1,500 miles uh, by the end of 2010. Spain will actually have more miles than any other nation. Right. Uh, over 1,500 miles within the next 12 months. So are we in California, have you decided which system to use? I mean, you, you favor yeah, the, 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 wheel, right? the The decision to use steel wheels steel on wheels. steel tracks was made years before I became a member of the Board of Trust okay. of uh, Directors, less, um, uh, or the Chairman of the Board of Directors. Uh, and uh, an aspect of the system is that it's electrically powered, which creates environmental benefits, uh, obviously. It's estimated that our system, which will be an 800-mile system, give or take a few miles, all the way from San Diego on the south to Sacramento, will decrease by 22 billion tons carbon dioxide wow. emissions in California by the year 2030. It'll reduce the need by approximately 18 million barrels of oil over the same period uh, of time. And the system, interestingly, regenerates electricity, not a major percentage, but about seven or eight from percent. From the wind or from? From the braking mechanisms. Fantastic. Yeah, it is. So uh, this is not only saves time and, and, and it's green, it's good for the environment. That is true. And in addition uh, to that, it's a system which will average, for example, in France it averages about 185 miles per hour with a top speed now of about 220 miles per hour. The French, in April of 2007, to show the world, set a speed record uh -huh. of 357 miles per hour on a, test on a test track. You can't run it at that speed when you have population density, right. of course. Uh, the Japan average speed is less than in France because Japan is more densely populated. So Japan averages somewhere around 170 miles because per hour. Because it stops at different uh, stations between. There's no long 
stretches? Well, there are long stretches on some of the trains, but if you come into Kyoto for, or Tokyo or Nagasaki, you have to cut speed. The same as will occur in California, coming into Los Angeles right. Union Station, coming in Trans Bay Terminal in San Francisco or the San Jose Station, you you'll have to decrease uh, speed. speed. Yeah. But coming up the Central Valley, and I ought to explain the alignment that will be followed, you can run at 200 to 220 miles per hour. So, so briefly, the alignment, let's talk kind of like, I think sure. it was mentioned in the video, but let's re, you know, review well, that. The entire project, as stated, is San Diego to Sacramento. It won't be built all at one time. It'll be built in two phases. Okay. Phase one, which was adopted in May of 2007 by the authority, will be San Francisco to San Jose to Merced over the Pacheco Pass, from Merced to Fresno, Fresno to Bakersfield, following okay. the st the Highway 99 alignment, okay. from Bakersfield to Palmdale, Palmdale to Union Station, downtown Los Angeles, and thence to Anaheim. From San Francisco to Union Station in Los Angeles, about two and a half hours, yes. and about another 20 minutes from Los Angeles Union Station to Anaheim. Anaheim will be the location for a mammoth Orange County Transportation Authority transportation uh, terminal. So because uh, all the trains will end in Anaheim at phase one or? In, at phase, phase one. one. Yeah. Phase two in Southern California will extend the system in Orange County to Irvine, but then also through Ontario in San Bernardino County, it, and Ontario's the location of the Ontario Airport, owned by the County of Los Angeles, and from Ontario through Riverside County to San Diego. On the north, phase two will consist of extending from Merced to Modesto, okay. to Stockton, to Sacramento. The first phase is estimated to take about eight years to build. San Francisco to Anaheim. The second phase will take about five to seven years to build uh, both the Southern California and uh, the Northern California yeah. extensions. It's very exciting. So what are the dates? I mean, you give us the times. Well, what, what are we looking at? Again, on the ballot, November 4th okay. is Proposition 1. Proposition 1 is a bond issue. The amount of the bond is $9,950,000,000. With passage of that, we will be able to complete the engineering design by the end of 2009 and begin construction in 2010 and open the system in 2018. 2018, the, the first will, phase. The first phase, yeah. The second phase, as indicated, will take about five to seven years. So you can look at 2023 to 2025. Okay, so at that time, probably the gas will be $10 a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, congestion, and I mean, so uh, let's talk about the growth. I mean, you know, you're gonna have a lot of people, you're gonna have expensive gas. So tell us about the growth in California. Let's see what's going on there. As the uh, v video stated, the population forecasters, the experts on population growth, predict that California's population will be about 50 million people by the year 2030. We are now 37 million. In order to accommodate that, uh, you'd need to build nine additional freeways. Wow. I ask rhetorically, how do you build freeways in California today? You'd have to expand airports. You'd need at least five additional runways in the major airports, LAX and Los Angeles, San Jose, San Francisco, SFO, uh, Lindbergh Field in uh, San Diego. It's difficult environmentally uh, to build any additional runways. San Francisco wanted to put a runway, for example, in San Francisco Bay never was able to do so. It won't be able to do so. Yeah. Yeah, so with the growth, 
And with the high uh, gas uh, cost, I'm assuming uh, it will be cheaper to fly than take high-speed rail, or is it the other way around? The other way around. Really? We estimate uh, that a one-way trip from San Francisco to Los Angeles would be $55. Today's dollars. In today's dollars, and uh, then use inflation, even if you use inflation at 3 or 4% per year, uh, let's say uh, another 10 years, so you're talking about another 30 to $40 on top of that. Now today, somebody told me about one of these airline special prices. Okay. But I've been paying on, uh, I suppose I shouldn't identify airlines, but I've been paying about $250 on a round trip ticket from yeah, San Francisco to yeah, Los Angeles. Right, yeah. uh, I think that's what most people are uh, paying. I forecast that uh, a one-way ticket and a, re and a round trip as well will be somewhere between a third to a half of what an airline ticket will cost in the year 2018. Wow, that's really amazing. I mean, you save time, you save money. What else do I need? And you're also safe. The safety record in Japan and Germany and France and every place else that high-speed rail operates uh, is formidable. There hasn't been a single fatality from operation of high-speed rail since 1964 anywhere in the world. There was a high-speed accident in Germany about 14 years ago caused by a pre-World War II bridge, oh. which was being used by the ICE, the German uh, system. Yeah. But no other operational, if you consider that operational, I suppose you can argue that it isn't operational. It's structural. Yeah, it's structural uh, yeah. in a sense. And the timeliness is remarkable. In fact, in the Japanese system, if it's a minute late behind schedule, people have to answer within the Shinkansen system as to why it was a minute late. Absolutely. You can bet your bottom dollar on it that it will be on time. And of course, that's one of the frustrations of air travel now. Uh, I don't know the experience of people who are watching, but I've had some dreadful experiences just trying to go from Northern California to Southern California with cancellations, yeah. Yeah. with planes leaving an hour to two and a half hours behind schedule. Yeah. It's uh, risky. Two weeks ago, I went to Los Angeles for the first time going and coming. The schedule was kept. Absolutely. Yeah. So before I get, you know, we've got a couple of minutes left, but I want to cover the bond issues. Yes. What's going to go on in the November election. Yeah. And if we have time, we'll talk more about the benefits. Yes. Okay. So give me some, uh, what is the deal well, with the bonds? Well, uh, the, the cost should be discussed, as I'll now do. The estimated cost of phase one, San Francisco through Los Angeles to Anaheim, is $33 billion. And those aren't just today's dollars, those are based on inflated dollars. estimated inflation. Yeah. And the financing plan calls for the state to contribute a third, the federal government to contribute a third, and private investment to oh. contribute a third. Two years ago, I would have laughed if you predicted private investment. I don't laugh anymore. There are 37 money funds in the world devoted to investing in public structures. Everything from a Wall Street firm such as Goldman Sachs to the California Public Employees Retirement System. There is money in the world for investment in public structures, including primarily public transportation structures. Another example would be toll roads. And in the Congress, there is now pending a joint conference committee between the Senate and the House of Representatives on two transportation funding bills that are 
primarily for the Amtrak system which is a conventional rail system probably averaging 50 miles per hour in operation throughout the United States. The House of Representatives version of that bill contains $14 billion for the first time in history for high-speed rail. The Senate version contains a little less than $2 billion. Those differences will be reconciled in joint conference committee meetings. Even if that bill is not passed this year in the House of Representatives form, and this is a presidential and national election year, I am confident it will be passed next year. And what it means is that states will then be able to apply for the money appropriated for high-speed rail. No state has progressed in its planning and ability to begin construction of high-speed rail like California. Okay. No other state is close. And obviously, with the Speaker of the House of Representatives from California, California should have an advantage in qualifying for that uh, money. The bond issue represents, in a sense, our down payment, the state's down payment for our one-third portion. And Using $33 billion, a third amounts to approximately $11 billion, we anticipate there will also be public and private, local and regional money that will be invested to make the $11 billion a reality. I say that because uh, in Japan and in other countries, the stations serve as a fulcrum for development. I for see. example, the Kyoto Station in Japan has a hotel, it has an office building, it has a theater for stage productions, it has housing built around the station. That's fantastic. Judge, you know, we're going to have the community prepare some questions next show. We will bring a member of the community. We're going to ask a question about, you know, about high-speed rail and what the community is concerned about and what they want to learn. So do we have you next week for, for the show? Certainly. That would be really great. I mean, this is a lot of information. I think uh, you know, you, a lot of people have some questions. So next week, make sure that you come to ATV at 9.30 Thursday, like every week in the evening, at 8.30 Thursday in the evening. Watch our program. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, contact the AACC, and we could also help you and, and to answer these questions. So let's see you next week, and thank you, Judge, for this segment. It was a pleasure having you here. It's and mutual. Thank you very much, and good night, everyone. <laughs>